change is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to confront it and all through persistence, we discover the power within us to overcome any challenge. This year, be determined to join the League of Home Owners and take advantage of the add-on homes property listings as we journey with you to overcome looming challenges with our flexible payment plans and affordable product offerings. Stand your ground. Become a homeowner today. Subscribe to Adron Homes. Building cities, communities, and homes. From Lagos, the nation's commercial capital, this is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television, reporting tonight at Mwawodo. Hello and welcome tonight. After two years of investigation, coroner rules that Sylvester Oromoni Jr., a student of Darwin College, Lagos, died a natural cause, blames his parents and medical team of negligence. Senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, folds judgment. Ahead of the governorship primary of the All Progressives Congress in Undo State, Governor Loki Ayedatiwa and Senator Jimo Ibrahim ramp up their tour of various local government areas in the state. And more trouble for the APC National Chairman Abdullahi Ganduje as some members of his ward in Kano State announce his suspension. Ward Chairman denounces suspension, says action is null and void. On business news tonight, Nigeria's headline inflation soars to 33.2% as food prices tick higher. On sports news tonight, all is set as the 2024 Paris Olympics flame will be lit. And the ancient city of Olympia, Greece, on Tuesday, kick-starting the touch relay with 100 days to go. From Abuja, the nation's capital, or your state command of the Nigerian police, parade 21 suspects in connection with Saturday's invasion of the state government secretariat. Sir, suspects will be charged with treasonable felony and terrorism. And in international news from London, Donald Trump's long-awaited hush money trial has got underway in New York, marking the first time ever that a U.S. president has faced a criminal trial. After over two years of uncertainty surrounding the cause of the death of Sylvester Oromoni Jr., a student of Doan College, Lagos, the verdict of the coroner inquest is finally out. The coroner magistrate, Mikhail Kaderi, today ruled that Sylvester Oromoni died a natural death. In the presentation that lasted over six hours, the coroner also held that the death was avoidable, as according to him, the negligence of the parents and the medical team contributed to it. Magistrate Kaderi absolved some students of Doan College named in the incident. Our judiciary correspondent Shola Shieli reports. The 12-year-old student of Doan College, Sylvester Romani Jr., died in November 2021 under controversial circumstances. The news of the death subsequently went viral, following a social media post by a family member who alleged that some senior students of the college beat up Romani Jr. in his hostel because he refused to join a cult. But the school denied the claim, stating that the boy complained of leg pains following an injury sustained while playing football. The family subsequently demanded a coroner's inquest into the cause of death. And about six weeks after the boy died, the coroner started sitting. The inquest dragged from January 15, 2022, 
and the coroner has now presented his findings on Monday, April 15, 2024. During the inquest, the coroner, Magistrate Mikhail Kadiri, listened to the testimonies of about 32 witnesses. They included the parents of the late student, the management of Doen College, as well as some teachers, members of staff, and the senior students are led to have bullied the late student. Others who testified were police officers who investigated the incident, as well as medical doctors and pathologists. The coroner spent over six hours reviewing the facts gathered and presented his findings to indicate that the later Romani Jr. died a natural but avoidable death. The coroner, who broke down in tears several times while reading his findings, said the evidence gathered showed that the later Romani Jr. suffered avoidable excruciating pains due to parental and medical negligence, which led to his needless death. Among the evidence relied on were the findings of two autopsies conducted on the late student in Wari Delta State and another in Lagos. The autopsies revealed the cause of death to include septicemia, which demanded urgent medical care, but which was not given timelessly. The coroner exonerated Doen College and the five senior students accused of bullying the late Romani Jr. and administering a poisonous substance on him. But I must tell you, as a father, the verdict does not represent the true proceeding of, of the court. I came to court every day. I don't miss any day. It's unfortunate that innocent young boys almost had their lives irreversibly destroyed because of lies. Lies that have been shown for what they are today. In his recommendations, the coroner advised parents not to take their children's health with levity. He called for better synergy between the police and medical teams in matters of this nature. He also called for proper psychological evaluation for the five students suspected to have bullied the late student. Shola Shueli, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, human rights lawyer Mr. Femi Falano has faulted the coroner judgment on Sylvester Romani Jr., which exonerated Doan College and blamed his death on the negligence of the family doctor. In a statement, Mr. Fallon notes that it is curious that the coroner ignored the evidence of the government pathologist that the black substance found in Sylvester's stomach was not subjected to toxicological examination. But he claimed that the allegation was that the student was forced to drink a poisonous substance. According to the senior advocate of Nigeria, the doctors who testified stated that the deceased died of sepsis and that the sepsis could have been caused by excessive massaging of the leg of the deceased. The coroner conveniently overlooked the fact that the school doctor and the nurses massaged the leg of the deceased for two days before inviting his parents to take him home. He also faulted the coroner for exonerating Doen College, explaining that the coroner discountenanced the evidence of a student that he saw Sylvester bitten up and subjected to torture by a group of senior students. Still to other legal matters, the Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja has adjourned to May the 27th the trial of Chief Claytus Ibeto and his company, Ibeto Energy Development Company and Odo Holdings Limited on a 10-count charge bordering on allegations of conspiracy, fraud, forgery and fraudulent use of documents. Justice Oinda Molao Gala adjourned the proceedings to await the verdict of the appeal court on an application challenging the lower court's jurisdiction. At the proceedings today, counsel to Chief Ibeto Adebayo Shudi told the judge that the defense had decided to withdraw two applications pending in the court, one for stay of proceedings and another filed by senior advocate of Nigeria, Onyechi Kwazo, challenging the court's powers to try the defendants. With no objections from the prosecuting counsel, senior advocate of Nigeria, Rotomi Jacobs, the judge dismissed the applications. The judge held that it will be better to await the appellate court's verdict before taking further steps in the trial. Meanwhile, the appeal filed by the defendants at the Court of Appeal is slated for hearing on May the 7th, 2024.
And staying with the courts for this time in the nation's capital, Abuja, where Justice Binta Nyako of the Federal High Court has adjourned till April the 30th, the arraignment of four suspects who allegedly kidnapped and killed the traditional ruler of Amanze Obowo autonomous community in Imo State, Eze Basil Njoko. The adjournment follows the absence of the Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagwemi, or a representative to lead the persecution of the defendants. Although the four defendants were billed for arraignment by 9 a.m., the judge was forced to shift it till noon today due to the non-appearance of the AGF or his representatives in court. When the arraignment was to hold, neither the AGF nor his representative was in court. The situation prompted the judge to invite lawyers to the defendants into the chambers where an adjournment of April the 30th was fixed. Meanwhile, the three counts earlier slammed against the defendants have now been increased to five. Away from the courts now to politics, ahead of the All Progressives Congress governorship primary in Undo State on Saturday, Governor Lucky Ayedatiwa has taken his campaign tour to Akure North and Idori local government areas of the state. Well, according to him, the overwhelming turnout of supporters to the statewide local government tour is a pointer to his acceptability by all in the party. Expressed confidence that the people will turn en masse on April the 20th to cast their vote for him. The first stop of the day is Iju Town in Akure North local government area and the governor alongside his entourage arrived to a rousing welcome from party faithfuls. Mr. Aida who is visibly happy, says the turnout of supporters everywhere he goes is a pointer that he will clinch the party's ticket. I'm so grateful and I thank God, I thank the people of Akureno, the leaders of our party across the, the world, all the world executive council members, the world chairman, the local government executive council member, the local government chairman, and all our leaders in Akure North. They have done so well. They have mobilized support. They've done so much. Even before coming here, they have been doing a lot by themselves, contributing money by themselves to mobilize themselves for my support. The next stop is the hilly town of Idori in Idori local government area, where an even larger crowd welcomes the governor. Some stakeholders of the party are optimistic of victory come Saturday. Come Saturday, by God's grace, the governor is going to win massively. Uh, the people of Ondo State are behind him and they are going to vote for him. The women are behind him. The men, the elderly, the young, the youths are with him and they are also going to come out massively to vote for him. The support you are seeing shows that he's a man of the people. They love him. All the party members, word by word, have been coming out to support the governor. And that shows us that the governor is acceptable to the people of the state and people, he has popular support of the people of the state, not just the party leaders, but the general rank and file of the party. The governor will continue his tour of local government areas to the river Rhine areas of Ilaje and Eseodu. Meanwhile, another APC governorship aspirant, Senator Jimo Ibrahim, says that he is confident of winning the party's ticket in Saturday's primary election. Dr. Ibrahim stated this while fielding questions from Channel's television in Oka Akoko, the headquarters of Akoko South local government area of Undo State. <laughs> Ahead of the APC governorship primaries in Undo State this weekend, one of the aspirants, Senator Jimo Ibrahim, has continued his tour of local government areas to meet Ashiyori movement members at the ward level. This time, Senator Ibrahim and his team are visiting three local government areas in the northern senatorial district of the state, from Owo to Akuko Southwest and Akuko Northwest. In all the places visited, the people welcomed the governorship aspirant with a promise to galvanize delegates to vote massively for him at the primaries. While appreciating their support, Senator Ibrahim appeals to all members eligible to vote at the primaries to do so peacefully and ensure their votes count. Those are my supporters. 
and there are enough to get the tickets for APC. We have well over 100,000 supporters, and whatever variance you put, you know, we win the tickets. My message for them is to make sure they are calm, peaceful, vote, stay there, count your votes, and make sure your vote counts. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Ashiyori movement, Senator Omotayo Alashu Adura, appeals to APC members to vote for the most qualified governorship aspirant. Our people will show their mettle and vote massively for somebody who worked very closely with Akri Dolu when he was alive. Somebody who supported him all the way. Somebody who supported him to make him governor. Somebody who supported him to ensure that he became governor. Somebody who supported him throughout his tenure. Somebody who will support him and support his family in everything that was done. So I believe this is the time that our people will reciprocate the good gesture of Senator Jim Ibrahim. Other prominent members of the group corroborate the chairman's position. Senator Dr. Jumo Ibrahim, as an aspirant, is the most popular with the people. He's the one that he has traversed all the 18 local government twice. He has taken the pains to go around to all the 203 wards, ministering to people and encouraging them to foster along with him. Senator Jimo Ibrahim is hopeful that reaching out to APC members at the grassroots in Ondo State will help him clinch the APC Ondo governorship ticket ahead of elections in November. Part two after the break. Some members in the ward of the APC National Chairman Abdullahi Gandu Jain Kano State announces suspension. Others denounce it. Plus, the camp of former Edo State Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu and the state government trade blame over the demolition of security post Mr. Shaibu's residence in Benin City, the Edo State capital. Please stay with us. Celebrate the start of life's journey. We marry in colors with our proudly Nigerian Duolox paints. Now available in any color. Express your world however you want it. Visit a Duolox color center to get any color instantly. Duolox, let's color. to feel pain. Ease the pain with Isidore for fast relief from pains and fever. Isidore comes in easy to swallow caplets for adults and suspension for children. Isidore, ease the pain. A product of May and Baker. If symptoms persist after two days, please see your doctor. No matter the weather, no matter the time, we go there together.
right. What the? Today, Apple got a really expensive ride. Chill, Apple. Use InDrive and negotiate for the most fair price for you. InDrive, people driven. Oh no! After a party, Binta needs a safe ride. Binta, get InDrive and choose rides by driver's rating, car, and time of arrival. InDrive, people driven. The future belongs to the dreamers, to the doers, to those who are not afraid of the side hustle. It's for those who are ready to turn their passion into something big and to help keep you revitalized and inspired. Top Tea is with you every step of the way. You are made for more. Find your inspiration. Top Tea. Big round bags of flavor. My skin is my identity, my strength. It's unique and deserves care made specially for me. New Nivea Radiance and Beauty Even Glow, enriched with 95% pure vitamin C and pearl extract. For visibly radiant and even toned skin in just two weeks. New Nivea Radiant and Beauty Even Glow, for your shade of beautiful. like chicken, parsley, and garlic. And enriched with iron, so your meals are better for you and more delicious, too. That's the cocoa. Let's give it some accolades. Change your world by changing what's on your plate. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, coming to you live on Channel's television from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. After over two years of investigation, coroner rules that Sylvester Oromoni Jr., a student of Darwin College, Lagos, died a natural cause, blames his parents and medical team of negligence. Senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, folds the judgment. Ahead of the governorship primary of the All Progressives Congress in Undo State, Governor Lucky Ayedatiwa and Senator Jimo Ibrahim ramp up their tour of various local governments in the state. More trouble for APC National Chairman Abdullahi Ganduje as some members of his ward in Kano State announce his suspension. Ward Chairman denounces suspension since action is null and void. And former U.S. President Donald Trump's long-awaited hush money trial gets underway in New York. There seems to be more trouble for the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Abdullahi Ganduje, who has now been suspended by members of his ward in Dawakintofa, local government area of Kanu State. The executive council of Ganduje Ward, led by one Haruna Gwanjo, announced his suspension during a press briefing in Kano today. Mr. Gwanjo explained that the former governor has to clear his name regarding the corruption allegations against him by the Kano state government. A viral video in 2017 had captured the former Kano state governor allegedly receiving bundles of dollar notes as bribe from a man said to be a contractor and stuffing them into his pockets. Mr. Ganduje had denied the content of that video when it first surfaced, claiming innocence of the allegations. Meanwhile, the Ganduje Ward Executive Committee members and Dawakin Tofa Local Government Executive Committee members have denounced the suspension of the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Ganduje. The Ganduje Ward Chairman, Ahmed Koko, says those who addressed the press conference were sponsored by the NNPP government of Kano State and are not card-carrying members of the APC. Mr. Koko maintains that the suspension has no validity, adding that the purported suspension is null and void and would have no effect on the national chairman. Mr. Koko vowed that the committee intends to pursue legal action against the individuals involved and asking all party members to disregard the purported suspension and remain calm. 
We continue with politics and ahead of the National Executive Council meeting of the People's Democratic Party, some concerned stakeholders of the party from the North Central area are now appealing to the National Working Committee of the party to allow the national chairmanship position remain in Benue State where the suspended PDP national chairman, Mr. Yocha Ayu, comes from. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, a former federal lawmaker, Senator Jeff Orca, explains that the constitution of the party allows that the chairman or any national officer who is suspended be replaced with another member from the same zone. Let's head over now to Benin City, the Edo State capital, where the camp of the former deputy governor, Philip Shaibu, has been reacting to the demolition of the security post situated at his residence. The spokesperson of the impeached deputy governor, Mr. Robert Ajelen, recounts the event which he says he witnessed. We suddenly saw the bulldozer in the, in the, in the, in the front of the premises. And we approached them, they said that from roads and bridges that were sent from Gometas. When I answered, for which purpose? They said they came to demolish the security post in the front of the deputy governor's house. We tried to play with them, they refused. Before we know, they went ahead, destroyed security sand, pulled it down. And to my notice, I was surprised because I never see something like this in my lifetime. Because if you look about a two point away, the SSG zone is standing. If you, if, if, if you can remember, OJ, uh, the former deputy governor, Odubu, his zone is standing there. Which the security people are still using it. Why is it that? One of the Shaibu was put down. He's exposed to threat. Anybody can easily bash in because the security men are supposed to be at watch, stay at outside there, monitoring every movement that is coming about. Meanwhile, the Edo State government sees nothing wrong with the demolition. The Commissioner for Information, Mr. Chris Nakere, told Channels Television that the impeached deputy governor, by virtue of his removal, has lost such privileges attached to the office. The structure you're talking about is first and foremost not in the deputy governor's residence. It's opposite his residence. And secondly, it was a security post, you know, and um, I'm sure you know lots of very big men in this town. Is there any where there are security posts opposite their houses? He's a former deputy governor. And uh, as being former, he has lost the paraphernalia of office. He has lost the goodwill of being a government official and needs special protection. He has a massive gatehouse inside his compound which I'm sure he has security men inside there. And this particular security post or whatever you want to call it across the road was an impediment on the right of way. It did not give the normal six foot uh, for access to the road. And it was, it was there. But since he's, he's no longer the deputy governor, it's just like any other big man in Benin City. So it does, that, that privilege no longer exists. Let's head over to our Abuja studios now to bring us more on the news at 10. Gloria Umezoke is standing by. Hello, Gloria. It's good to see you. Many thanks, Anne. Well, here in Abuja, we begin with the president who has just returned to Abuja from Lagos, where he spent the Eid al Fitri, marking the end of Ramadan. President Bola Tinubu, who arrived at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport at about 4 p.m., was received by the Minister of the FCT, Mr. Nyeso Mwiki, the Chief of Staff to the President, Mr. Femi Bajabi Amila, the APC National Chairman, Mr. Abdullahi Ganduje, and other top government officials. In Oyo State, the police command has paraded 21 suspects in connection with the invasion of the state government secretariat on Saturday, April the 13th. The invaders, who claimed to be members of the Yoruba Nation agitators, were paraded alongside seized weapons and communication gadgets. The Commissioner of Police in the state, Mr. Debola Hamzat, 
told journalists that the suspects would be charged with treasonable felony and terrorism as investigations intensify to get those at large and their sponsors. The serene environment of the government secretary at Ibadan was disrupted early Saturday morning when some armed men in their dozens encroached on the building, claiming they want to occupy the seat of power for a self-declared Yoruba nation. After gaining access to the State House of Assembly premises, they removed the Nigerian flag and hoisted their own in the process. This led to a face-off between the invaders and security agents, with one Amoteku operative and two of the invaders sustaining gunshot wounds. Following this development, the U.S. State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Adebola Hamzat, gives an update on the situation. That to my knowledge, because I was equally physically on ground, I know that many of them ran into the bushes and we pursued them. And that's where we were able to arrest a few others from the seven we initially had. There was an injury to a government functionary that is a member of the Amatekun. He was shot and about nine pellets were removed from his leg. I know of that injury to us, but I also know of injury to them, few of them who resisted arrest and fired at our people. Whether anybody died apart from the one we arrested, I cannot see. But our combine of the bush, we did not see any cops. The police further confirmed how investigations led them to the hideouts of the invaders in Ibadan, where more discoveries were made. Some of them revealing to us who the possible sponsors are, that's why I say investigation is still continuing. And the location of where they actually keep some of those equipment or insignia that they have. This led us to two places. Anywhere you have, we have information of police that arms and ammunition are being kept. We have the power of ingress into the place and recover those things. We use that power and we were able to recover three more rivals which were not part of the four initially and we were able to recover all this in Signa. From the conversation with some of the suspects, it's obvious that the invaders have been preparing for the hostile takeover for over two years. They have many cells across the state, as the suspects claim to have come from Ibado, or your town, and Igbora, in the Ibarakpa axis of the state. And as investigation continues into the matter, security agents have scaled up security on government installations and facilities across all your state. Bukola Uriwo, Channels Television News. Well, still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria's headline inflation soars to 33.2% as food prices tick higher. That's on Business News. Let's join us again. First Money is Nigeria's biggest and most preferred agent banking network. Thanks to First Money, millions of people are living their dreams. Meet some First Money agents who are driving this. Started just with 100,000 naira, but the demand became so much, I had to buy others. It was like a dream come true. I can confess to you that uh, the monthly commission that I receive from First Money Agency Sometimes it overshoots what you receive from the petrol, even pet petrol and gas. Through First Money, over 1 million people across Nigeria have their financial services needs met daily. In all the accessible local government areas, you are bound to find First Money agents. With First Money, we're bringing financial inclusion and the many benefits that come with it. You first, First Bank. Enjoy the delicious creamy goodness of cowbells with Vitarich and vitamin B9, which supports brain development. Cowbell, so creamy, so good. We all know the feeling, hanging out with friends and reaching for that refreshing bottle of soda. <laughs> but hold on a minute. What we don't always see is what's hidden inside those bottles. So when you reach for that bottle, 
can or juice box. Remember, it's not just a drink, it's a threat to your health. In everyone, share goodness with someone today. Malta Guinness. Enjoy a world of good. The Duchess International Hospital caters to every aspect of a family's health needs. A one-stop shop for maternity and child health services, emergency medicine and critical care, medical and surgical subspecialties, dental and eye care, and a range of other subspecialties and services all available at a single location right here in the heart of Ikeja. And it really doesn't matter if you're paying out of pocket using your HMO or private insurance. We focus completely on providing that world-class affordable healthcare for all the family at all times. Welcome back. You're still watching the news at 10, coming to you live on Channels Television. As part of measures towards enhancing security in the nation's capital, the Minister of the FCT has distributed a hundred motorcycles to security agencies during the flag-off ceremony at the FCT Authority headquarters in Abuja. Mr. Wike explained that the motorcycles are solely for use in the urban and rural communities of the FCT. Our correspondent, Kumbi Aboluade, reports that the minister also promised more operational vehicles within the next two weeks. Top officials of the Nigerian Police Force, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Department of State Services, amongst others, have converged here for the distribution of 100 motorbikes by the Federal Capital Territory Authority. The FCT minister, Mr. Yesom Wiki, is here to flag up the ceremony at the FCT authorities headquarters in Abuja. He tells the gathering that it is all about boosting operations of security agencies in the FCT. He also gives a breakdown of the distribution plan. We don't want to continue to hear excuses that the terrain is so bad, they require this and that and they have not been given. Now that you have been given, this may not be enough. We continue to provide uh, more for vehicles who believe by the next two weeks, the vehicles would have been ready to give out to the security agencies too. So make sure for us, we will not relent until those who said we will not sleep, they will also not uh, uh, sleep. So we we'll give out 10 to each of the councils. We we'll give out 30 to the police, and five for SSS, five for civil uh, defense. The insecurity in the FCT has been a concern to many residents. Reports of the situation became more worrisome within the period of December 2023 and January 2024, with residents appealing for the intervention of the government. After the event, the Commission of Police shares its delight over the donation. He holds the belief that those perpetrating kidnappings and other heinous crimes reside in border communities. We are going to distribute it to the rural areas. It's good for policy. And we want to thank the Honorable Minister and uh, tell him that he will see the difference. There's areas in uh, this FCT you may not know. It's not Abuja, uh, Maitama, Asokuro that is FCT. The areas you will go, you need this. Uh, we even need the canoe and the uh, speedboat in some areas in Kujia and the Buari Area Council. So we need 
it will assist us in securing FCT. With the distribution of over 50 motorcycles to security agencies here today, it is expected that they put them into good use and curb the menace of insecurity ravaging in some parts of the FCT. From the FCTA, Kumbi Aboluade, Channels Television News. Efforts towards curbing transnational criminal activities, particularly as it relates to illicit drug production and trafficking, are being stepped up with collaboration between Nigeria and the United Kingdom. In line with this commitment, a new building donated by the UK government has been inaugurated at the NDLEA Special Area Command in Lagos to serve as a vital hub for data analysis and strategic planning. Just as a chairman and chief executive officer of the NDLEA, Brigadier General Boba Mawa thanked the UK for its commitment to the NDLEA's course. The British Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Johnny Baxter, acknowledged that the illicit drug industry now requires a global response. I must begin by expressing our deepest gratitude to the British government for their unwavering commitment and invaluable contributions to our cause. From the onset of our collaboration, the UK has been a steadfast ally in our relentless pursuit to neutralize transnational organized criminal activities, particularly in the realm of illicit drug production and trafficking. The significance of this project cannot be overstated. It will serve as a vital hub for data analysis and strategic planning in our efforts to disrupt drug trafficking networks and apprehend those responsible. With state-of-the-art facilities and technology at our disposal, we are better equipped than ever before to tackle this complex and ever-evolving challenge head on. We are absolutely delighted to be supporting this office but we're absolutely delighted to be continuing our support to the NDLA and to the Nigerian government to tackle what is sadly a global industry. And a global industry needs a global response and needs governments and partners to work together. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. It's back to you, Anne, for more on the News at 10. Thank you very much, Gloria. The Inspector General of Police, Kaya Diegbetoku, has reaffirmed the dedication of the force to fostering the culture of excellence and professionalism among its personnel. Speaking at the Nigeria Police Awards and Commendation Ceremony at the nation's capital, Abuja, the IGP says the awards is aimed at motivating officers and men of the force to uphold the highest standards of professionalism and dedication to service. In a profession where integrity is critical, these awardees have demonstrated that honor and virtue transcend mere rhetoric, but guiding principles that should shape every of our actions and decisions. Similarly, recognition, commendation, and honor will be given to deserving officers who diligently carried out investigations and prosecutions whose meticulous attention to detail and unwavering pursuit of justice play crucial roles in our criminal justice system. Their efforts have brought offenders to justice, delivered closure to victims, and reinforced the rule of law, transforming justice from a mere concept into a tangible reality for all. At this inaugural ceremony, awards will be presented in 16 distinct categories including crime busting, cybercrime, community policing, investigation, gallantry, and integrity. So company news now. One of Nigeria's leading vehicle manufacturing companies, GAC Motors, has hosted businessman and chairman of Kubana Group, Obinna Iyebu, better known as Obi Kubana, alongside his family and friends to an all-exclusive birthday celebration. The party, which held at the GAC Motors G-Style showroom in Victoria Island, Lagos, had in attendance many Nigerian celebrities and top-ranking officials of GAC Motors. Just 
The arrival of Nigerian businessmen, socialist, entertainer, and philanthropist Obi Kubana kickstarts the Night of Icons, an event facilitated by GAC Motors to mark his 49th birthday. <laughs> It's a night of entertainment and Nigerian celebrities, industry experts, family and friends of the businessman are also in the celebratory mode. The event also celebrates the ongoing partnership between Obi Kubana and GAC Motors, with the general manager of GAC Motors, Jubri Arugundade, revealing that Obi Kubana has brought tremendous goodwill to the GAC Motors brand. The large ride, the taxi that you see, blue and white taxi in Lagos, are all GAC cars. And we launched this about two years ago, and we are going to launch the next batch of those cars very soon. And the reason why we are also celebrating today is because the replica of what we have in Lagos, the taxi, is also now in Abuja, courtesy of Obi Kubana, which is the NBA motto. So in Abuja, you can ride a brand new GAC car as a taxi in Abuja. And you know what? Taxi used to be in Abuja. It's very crazy. But because of the likes of Obi Kubana, you can now ride brand new GAC car in Abuja for taxi as you ride as your general drive in Lagos. For the celebrant, GAC Motors as the best vehicle for Nigerian roads. So when we ventured into this... Uh transport business. I mean, we tried a lot of options, and then by the time we came across the GSC brand, and the, we realized that they are second to none, as in it suits the purpose for which we came into the business, in terms of fuel consumption, the durability of the vehicles, and then the ruggedity, the comfort, the external beauty, and everything, all these things coming together, I mean. The high point of the night is the presentation of an all-new GS8 GAC vehicle, a birthday gift to the celebrant. <laughs> Mr. Rugundadi notes that the car gift is GAC's motor's way of honoring and appreciating Obi Kubana for a long-standing partnership. Let's find out the latest on Nigeria's headline inflation rate and Will Ibonga standing by to take us through the world of business. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. <laughs> Thanks, Anne, and welcome to Business News. Now, Nigeria's headline inflation has maintained its upward trajectory, but this time soaring by 1.5% to 33.2%, up from 31.7% recorded in February this year. The latest figure, which rose far above economists to forecast, is one of the highest in the country's history as the nation continues to grapple with high cost of food, transportation, energy and services. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the food inflation, which is one of the major contributors to the headline figure, was higher at 40.01 percent. Core inflation climbed to 25.9 percent within the month in review. At the same time, urban inflation increased to 35.18 percent, while rural inflation jumped 31.45% in March. Now, in a bid to end the heightened exodus of multinationals and create an enabling environment for businesses in Nigeria, the Minister of Trade and Investment, Mrs. Doris Uzoka Anite, has paid a visit to Nigerian breweries and the Nigerian Exchange Group, where she met with key stakeholders. The aim of the visit is to find solutions to the tough economic challenges facing the companies. The manufacturing sector in Nigeria has not been spared from the harsh economic climate which has led to the exit of some multinationals. The government has decided to step in as the Minister of Trade and Investment pays a visit to Nigerian breweries which recently announced the suspension of two production plants in the country. The uh, temporary closure of these two plants is a very short-term mechanism. And we've also extracted from them commitments to ensure that those who are going to be laid off work 
have access to reemployment opportunities in other thriving plants and also support for economies for the communities where those plants are located. The management of Nigerian breweries says the move is part of a strategic recovery plan. We have been in the country for 78 years and yes, we are in difficult times, but we're very confident and also now comfortable that we can weather the storms um, that are coming at us. And with the support of government, the continued and very appreciated support of government, we are sure that we will sail through this difficult period. Next, the Minister of Trade visits the Nigerian Exchange Group, NGX, where she meets with representatives of listed manufacturing companies, and the focus of the discussion is none other than the challenging business environment. The group chairman of the NGX opens the floor for discussions with representatives of Dangote Group and Boa Group, making their own inputs. What are the challenges from some of our quoted companies, and what are they going to do as policy makers? for them to support not only the NGS but even the quartet companies. One of the major areas is that today when we take uh, loans for uh, foreign exchange, Forex, which is a very big constraint in challenge, we don't have a hedging mechanism. Where do we go when the currency is depreciating? Because one of the things we reflected on was when we talked about FX losses, most of the manufacturing industries are impacted. But other industries are not impacted. So the gain of someone is the loss of another person. Mrs. Uzoka Anite reassures them of the government's support. My ministry will continue to be open to work with businesses, with industries, with MSMEs, with the stock exchange, with the market, with every sector of the economy to ensure that we achieve the vision and the mission of His Excellency to realize the one trillion economy. So, the hope is that this move by the government will translate to growth and job losses and increase investor confidence in the Nigerian market. Will Ibang, Channels Television News. Now, to so talk about the markets, the domestic equities market opened the first trading day of the week with negative sentiments. Dominic Iwiwu has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. I'm Dominic Iwiwu. Well, from a negative performance last week, even though it was a holiday shot in week for each celebration, this week kicks off in the red, down by 0.52% to close at 101,778 points with a market capitalization of 57.561 trillion naira. Now let's take a look at the sectorial reports. The banking sector came down by 3.83%, while the consumer and oil and gas sectors remain unchanged. The losses in the banking sector could be likened to tier one banking stocks, which are down to start the week from a drop of about 7% last week. So it is a negative market breath today. There is no holiday this week, so investors will get a chance to trade all through the week. But today, it is bearish. <laughs> Thank you, Dominic. Let's check out the performance of other major stock markets around the world. And that's the wrap on business news. It's back to you and for the rest of the news at 10. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you, Will. Israel has vowed to respond to Iran's attack that happened on Saturday. It is now considering its next steps, and that's according to the country's army. Tehran launched more than 300 missiles and drones at Israel in what is set to be a retaliation for its strike on its consulate in Syria. Here's Yemen Puse with more international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five.
Donald Trump's long-awaited hush money trial has got underway in New York, marking the first time that a U.S. president has faced a criminal trial. Here, Trump's motorcade of black SUVs seen snaking its way through Manhattan towards the courthouse. The trial is expected to last six weeks, with the first one or two dedicated to the complicated task of selecting a jury. Mr. Trump is accused of trying to cover up a $130,000 hush money payment to the adult star Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 election, which he won. Mr. Trump is accused of falsifying his business records by saying the reimbursement money he gave Andrew Cohen was for legal fees. Ahead of the trial, he maintained his innocence. This is an assault on America. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There's never been anything like it. Every legal scholar said this case is nonsense. It should never have been brought. It doesn't deserve anything like this. There is no case, and they've said it. People that don't necessarily follow or like Donald Trump said this is an outrage that this case was brought. This is political persecution. This is a persecution like never before. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And again, it's a case that should have never been brought. It's an assault on America. Israel's allies have urged it to avoid any escalation as it considers a response to Iran's unprecedented missile and drone attack. Tehran launched more than 300 projectiles on Israel on Saturday in, in what it said was a retaliation for a strike on its consulate in Syria. The UK Foreign Secretary says Iran's attack had almost entirely failed and Israel should be smart as well as tough. I think if you look at the scale of what Iran was trying to do, you know, 110 ballistic missiles, 36 cruise missiles, 185 drones. It sometimes portrayed this attack as a sort of drone swarm, swarm. But actually, you know, the use of ballistic missiles in a state-on-state -state attack is a very significant move by Iran. Very dangerous, very reckless. Fortunately, it was an almost total uh, failure. But I don't think it was justified in any way by reference to what happened in. Um, Damascus. A bishop and several other people have been stabbed during a sermon in Sydney that was being streamed online. The incident reportedly happened in the suburb of Wakeley. Police responded to reports that a number of people had been stabbed but said none of their injuries were life-threatening. They added that a man had been arrested and was helping with their inquiries. The stabbing comes days after six people were killed at a shopping mall in the same city. The attacker was later shot dead by police. French President Emmanuel Macron says the Paris Olympics opening ceremony could move from the River Sienne if the security risk is too high. Mr Macron said it could be limited to the Trocadero across the Sienne from the Eiffel Tower instead of covering the planned stretch of the river. He added that it could even be moved to the Stade de France, reverting to a traditional ceremony. The opening ceremony is set to be the first to be held outside a stadium. More than 10,000 athletes are expected to sail along a six-kilometre stretch of this Sien on some 160 barges. Chad's interim president, Mahamat Idris Deby, has kicked off his presidential campaign for an election next month meant to end three years of military rule on a promise to strengthen security and boost the economy. Sure. Deby's government is one of several juntas that seized power in Africa since 2020, drawing concerns that democracy is failing on the continent. Chad is the first of those to organize elections despite regional and international pressure to swiftly hand power back to civilians. And an Australian magpie has been returned to a Queensland couple after an intense debate that gripped the nation. Juliette Wells and Rhys Mortensen were granted a special license to care for the magpie dubbed Molly, who was held by wildlife authorities for six weeks. Molly shot to fame via the couple's Instagram account, which documented its relationship with their pet dog, Peggy. The license comes with strict conditions barring the couple from profiting from the bird. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.
Many thanks indeed, Simon. Welcome to Sports News. Nine games will be played in March Day 30 of the Nigeria Premier Football League across the country on Tuesday evening. League leaders, uh, Rangers International will host Abia Warriors in the rental derby at the Namdi Azikiwe Stadium in Enugu, while title holders Aimba will play host to Heartland in Aba. Kanu Pillars will face Bendel Insurance at the Samuel Ogbemuda Stadium in Benin City, while uh, Gombe United and Kwai United will also be in action, among other exciting fixtures tomorrow. The EPL gets our attention next. Chelsea midfielder Cole Palmer scored four goals, which included a hard trick inside the first 29 minutes as his side thrashed poor Everton side at the Stafford Bridge in the EPL. The Blues are now unbeaten in eight games, improved their goal difference and moved to within three points of a place in the top six. As for Everton, they were playing in their first match since receiving a two-point deduction for a second breach of Premier League financial rules. It's nearly 100 days before the start of the 2024 Paris Olympic Games and the final rehearsals for the Olympic flame lighting ceremony held earlier today. The Olympic flame will be lit in the ancient city of Olympia on Tuesday. That's tomorrow for a torch relay stretching from the Acropolis uh, to French uh, Polynesia. Now, some 600 dignitaries are expected at the ceremony headed by Greek president and, of course, the International Olympic Committee president, Thomas Bash. And that's Sports tonight. I'm Kelly. It's back time. Thank you, Kelly. And the main news again. After over two years of investigation, coroner today ruled that Sylvester Oromoni Jr., a student of Doan College, Lagos, died of natural cause, blamed his parents and medical team of negligence. Just a senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, faltered the judgment. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Wawado. We now go over to the nation's capital, Abuja, to continue the Nigeria Police Awards and Commendations Ceremony. Thanks for staying with us. Good night. staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Christopher Musa, to please help us make these presentations as we invite the nominees to begin to come forward um, quickly, please. Thank you very much. Please, Legal Officer of the Year, nominees ASP Madaki Wisdom Emmanuel, Legal Section Force Headquarters Abuja, Superintendent of Police Yetunde Olabisi Kadosu, Legal Section Lagos State Command, and Inspector Daniel Shagbo. Kwaglade, Legal Section, Benway State Command. The three nominees for Police Legal Officer of the Year. Of course, there's quite a whole lot that is going to be written about this.